Legendary Pokemon are an interesting topic when it comes to competitive Pokemon. It seems as though people believe that legendary Pokemon ruin any sort of competitive integrity that the game may have. People will comment that VGC is ruined by the presence of legendaries like Landorus, Ogre Pond, Tornadus, etc., and things would be much better if they were just outright banned. That's sort of a topic for another day, but the sentiment of casual players not liking legendary Pokemon is fairly well documented, just go check Twitter. One can only imagine that restricted legends would only make the game more centralizing and lead to every team looking alike. Well, that isn't necessarily the case, as a matter of fact, the presence of legendary restricted Pokemon not only can lead to more interesting team archetypes, but it even leads to low tier Pokemon finding a niche in the game by beating those very legendaries. While I may not be the biggest fan of restricted formats, I think this is a pretty interesting topic and I want to share it with you all today. So today, let's discuss low tiers that beat legendaries. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because I make tons of competitive Pokemon content. As a matter of fact, you should just subscribe right now because I have a playlist full of content just like this that I know you'll enjoy once this video ends. And if you think you're subscribed, do me a favor and double check because only like half of my viewers actually are. Like I said, legendary Pokemon are pretty interesting in a competitive context. These behemoths have base stats well above 600 and their presence can lead to top tier Pokemon getting pushed out of relevancy. I mean, Tyranitar is a prime example of this. While Tyranitar has some massive stats, great moves, and an ability which sets up sand whenever it hits the field, as soon as legendary Pokemon become legal, its usage falls off a cliff. Groudon and Kyogre are not only competition as weather setters, but both of them have a good type advantage over Tyranitar, meaning it can easily get one shot by either one of them. Frankly, I don't care if you can kick up a sandstorm, just go kick rocks Tyranitar. Meanwhile, the existence of Kyogre almost always leads to a rise in usage of Shedinja. Now, Shedinja only gets used in two contexts in competitive Pokemon. The first one is on low ladder by those people in the comments that feel the need to let everyone know that Terra Electric Air Balloon Shedinja is unkillable, even though everyone knows that, Daniel. You're not cool, it loses to sand or any status move or timer even. And the other one is people who actually know what they're doing and want to use it to wall out Kyogre. You see, Shedinja is a gimmick Pokemon. How so? Well, it only has one HP, meaning any single attack will always one-shot it but its ability Wonder Guard makes it immune to any damaging attack that isn't super effective. As a bug ghost type, it's weak to fire, flying, rock, dark, and ghost type attacks. So if you don't have any one of those, Shedinja just kinda wins? While Kyogre is the example I used for a Pokemon which gets walled by Shedinja, the list of legendary Pokemon which effectively get walled by it is actually pretty impressive. This includes Kyogre, Zacian, Calyrex Ice, Dialga, Miraidon, and Zamazenta. The others will either commonly use moves which are super effective or can bypass Wonder Guard like Solgaleo with Sunsteel Strike or Zekrom with its ability. Notably, this list of Pokemon which get walled include many top tier restricted legends, so players can focus their team around beating specific partner Pokemon of those legendary Pokemon to reach a board state where Shedinja is effectively unkillable, allowing for Shedinja to will wisp them and stall them out for the remainder of the match to win. But Shedinja isn't just dead weight until its counters are gone, because for some reason, Game Freak thought it'd be a good idea to give it Ally Switch. Ally Switch is just about the most hated move in competitive Pokemon, it simply just makes the user switch places with a partner on the board. As Shedinja is immune to most moves, it can use Ally Switch to protect a partner from all damage, making the process of beating Shedinja teams one of the most annoying and nerve wracking things you might need to do in a tournament. But above all else, he's just a little guy. Ditto is yet another little guy which finds a niche in restricted formats. With some pretty abysmal stats, it's a wonder why it could be any use in a format with legendary Pokemon. So what does Ditto do well in a restricted format? What on earth could a Pokemon that turns into other Pokemon do when there are so many legendary Pokemon getting used? It's okay, I'll give you a minute to think about it. Okay, so what could be worse than a giant paint bubble? Oh I know, two giant paint bubbles. You see, Ditto obviously is able to turn into the opponent's legendary Pokemon by switching in against it with its ability Imposter. It will typically run the Choice Scarf item, allowing for it to not only copy the legendary Pokemon on switch-in, but outspeed it and KO it. One of the more notable uses for Ditto was switching in against a Xerneas which had already used Geomancy, so that Ditto would be able to reverse sweep the opponent. It was able to do a similar thing with Zacian Crown. Because Zacian Crown has the ability Intrepid Sword, upon switching in it gains plus one attack. When Ditto copies Zacian, it not only copies Zacian's attack boost, but then copies its ability, granting it a second attack boost. Making Ditto just a straight up better Zacian if it can get on the field safely. 
Unfortunately though, Ditto is a pretty uncommon pick in restricted formats despite having this niche. Don't get me wrong, its usage spikes whenever restricted Pokemon are around, but it's more like it goes from not being used at all to being a really annoying off-meta Pokemon. Gastrodon, while not being a bad Pokemon typically, tends to see a major spike in usage whenever restricteds are legal. The most obvious application is it abusing its ability of Storm Drain to wall out Kyogre. Storm Drain allows for Gastron to be immune to all water type attacks and grants it a boost in special attack if one gets used against it. This ability also redirects all water moves into Gastron, meaning that it's a phenomenal partner for Groudon. But Gastron's applications don't end there. Its great bulk, typing, and access to Yawn allows for Gastron to be a fairly safe pick into most teams. Yawn is an excellent pressure tool as it can stop sweeps altogether. By making the Pokemon drowsy on turn 1 and then fall asleep on turn 2, it can force the opponent to swap out a Pokemon before it can get the ball rolling. Beyond that, Stab on Earth Power is also pretty great for threatening Zacian, as it can hit it for super effective damage and even the strongest Zacian struggle to pick up a KO against Gastrodon with Play Rough. Bronzong tends to be a very overshadowed Pokemon in competitive, even as a levitating steel type. It's just that in most situations you would much rather have a bulkier Pokemon like Roselia or a more offensive Trick Rumor like Hatterene. This changes once the likes of Groudon and Xerneas become legal. Bronzong's ability allows for it to be completely immune to all ground-type moves, walling out Groudon if it's not running Fire Punch, but even then, pairing it with Kyogre will allow for Bronzong to take less damage from Fire moves with Rain active. But the main reason Bronzong sees heavier usage in restricted formats is its great matchup into Xerneas. Xerneas is by far the scariest sweeper in restricted formats due to Geomancy boosting its special attack, special defense, and speed by two stages. Bronzong is not only able to resist the plus 2 Moonblast and set up Trick Room in front of Xerneas, but deal massive damage to it with Gyro Ball. Since Xerneas is at plus 2 speed, it pretty much is always going to be taking a full power Gyro Ball, which deals more damage the faster the opponent is than the user. Which in this case is a whopping 150 base power. So if that Xerneas is chipped at all, that Gyro Ball will threaten a KO. <laughs> But while Bronzong is a pretty scary matchup for Groudon and Xerneas, it can actually be an ally for them as well. Bronzong can sometimes run the move Gravity. This move increases the accuracy of all moves for a few turns while grounding all Pokemon. This makes it so Groudon's Precipice Blades cannot miss and now can hit Levitating or Flying-type Pokemon. Raichu is a fan-favorite Pokemon. I mean, Pikachu gets shoved down everyone's throats in the marketing, so Raichu sort of flies under the radar a bit. It's just a mid-tier in regular play, despite it having some desirable traits. It has access to Fake Out, a pretty high speed tier at 110, and the ability Lightning Rod which redirects all electric attacks into it and grants it a special attack boost rather than taking damage. These traits just aren't enough to lift it out of mediocrity though, unless Kyogre is legal of course. As a pure water type, Kyogre is weak to electric attacks from the likes of Regieleki, Tapu Koko, and opposing Kyogre's Thunder. By having the Raichu able to hit the field at any time, Raichu not only defends Kyogre from electric moves by switching in, but it can even scare the opponent into just not clicking electric moves at all in fear of wasting a turn and giving that Raichu a boost in power. But Raichu has a few other tools under its belt. The move Nuzzle is a pretty low power attack, but it will always result in a paralyzed target. This allows for Raichu to provide some speed control support for teammates, which can be essential for Kyogre to outspeed the likes of Zacian or Calyrex Shadow if it no longer has access to Tailwind late in the match. Speaking of Calyrex Shadow, it actually led to a pretty forgotten Pokemon to finally have a niche in competitive play. Calyrex Shadow is, to put it frankly, the most broken Pokemon ever added to the game. With 150 speed, 165 special attack, good bulk, a perfectly accurate ghost move which hits both opponents, and an ability which boosts its special attack with every KO, it's pretty obviously too strong. That being said, as a ghost psychic type, it has a very exploitable Achilles heel. The dark type absolutely ruins this Pokemon. And what dark type is more ubiquitous than Incineroar? With access to Fake Out, Snarl, and Knock Off, Incineroar can very easily annihilate a Calyrex Shadow. Mian Shao, however, manages to finally carve out a niche as effectively Calyrex Shadow's bodyguard. Its ability Inner Focus not only prevents it from flinching, but as of Generation 8, it also grants it an immunity to Intimidate. So, Calyrex Shadow players can lead off with Calyrex and Mian Shao to heavily limit the counterplay. If the opponent leads off with Incineroar, Manchow can immediately click High Jump Kick into it and one-shot it since it never got the Intimidate drop. But even if the opponent has a way around this like clicking Follow Me and Snarl, Manchow can call this out and use Wide Guard to prevent Calyrex from being hit by the Snarl. Wide Guard is not only good for preventing Snarl, but it can even be used to hard wall out Choice Locked Restricted Pokemon like Opposing Specs Calyrex Shadow or Choice Scarf Kyogre with Water Spout. And a more niche but cool option for Manchow is to run the move Faint. 
to break Protect and allow for Caloric Shadow to get KOs against Pokemon attempting to Protect on that turn. Now that I'm done hyping up this thing, I think I've earned the right to finally ask this question. What are those things on Mian Xiao? Why does it look like that? Why is it so floppy? Okay, I, 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 is it alright? I, I just I just need answers. Like, legitimately, I don't know what those are. Comment. At the moment, we're just heading into another restricted format. In fact, the 2024 World Championships will be a restricted format event. So, we've yet to see just what low tiers will pop up to beat the likes of Miraidon, Coridon, and Terrapagos. So, I want to dedicate this section of the video to toss out a few ideas and see how well they age. First up, I think that Zacian, despite its nerfs in Generation 9, will still see heavy usage. As a result, we can expect a niche for unaware Pokemon with a good type matchup into it to be pretty valuable. Unaware is an ability which causes the user to ignore all stat changes from the Pokemon attacking them. So, Zacian can be at plus 3 attack and deal the same amount of damage it would to Don Dozo that it would have at neutral, which is not very much. The same can be said for Skeledurge, who not only ignores Zacian's stat boost, but can even wall out Zacian's common moves by resisting Behemoth Blade, Play Rough, and being immune to Sacred Sword. This one is a little bit of cope, but we might even see some usage for Clodsire, as it has similar traits to Gastrodon, with access to Ground Stab and Yawn, just with Unaware instead of a Water Immunity. But with Water Absorb, that is an option too. This might shock singles players, but Iron Valiant is actually a low tier in VGC. This is because it's just completely outclassed by Fluttermane, who it loses to outright. But with the introduction of Miradon to competitive, Electric Train will be active much more often, allowing for Iron Valiant to get a speed boost via Quirk Drive and support the team with Wide Guard and deal massive damage with Moonblast or Close Combat. Funny enough, it does lose an option in Hypnosis. Fast Hypnosis would be a pretty scary thing to throw out there, but with Electric Terrain, it prevents sleep outright anyways. And my final take is that Wo Chen could finally see some increased usage, Tablets of Ruin not only allow it to reduce the damage of all physical attacks, allowing for Pokemon like Kyogre, Calyrex Shadow, and Miradon to deal with physical restricteds like Calyrex Ice Rider and Groudon better, but its dark typing is quite valuable. It's able to switch in on Calyrex Shadow Rider comfortably and spam Snarl to reduce damage from it and other special attackers. The grass typing also allows for it to switch in on Miradon's Electro Drift or Kyogre's Water Spout. But this one is probably just more cope, so I don't know, just, just let me have this, please. Those are a few low tier Pokemon which beat legendary Pokemon. Not only do they find niches in restricted formats, but they thrive in an environment full of legendaries, despite being awful in lower power formats which precede them. Did I miss any Pokemon though? Let me know in the comment section down below and leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video at any point. It'd mean the world to me. If you'd like to support my videos even further, be sure to check out my Patreon page or become a YouTube channel member. Members and Patrons get access to bonus content like previews of future videos and see their name at the end of my videos like all of these lovely people. Special thanks to my most boosted supporters for their generous pledges. Thanks to Jordan Harridge, Avatar67, and Pika Power. With that, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.